So good afternoon. Um, I am Kimberly Ritter Martinez with the LAEDC, and I am the principal researcher and author of the Creative Economy Report. So I'm going to spend the next few minutes um, talking about some of the things that Bruce uh, mentioned, but going into a little bit more detail. So the first thing we want to um, talk about is you know, what is the creative economy? What are we trying to measure here? Well, there are three major components um, that we write about. The first, the creative economy is composed of the businesses and individuals who are involved in producing cultural, artistic, and design goods and services. Um, the creative economy also includes organizations, excuse me, uh, that provide a venue for artists to share their work with the public, such as museums, art galleries, and uh, theaters. And then finally, the creative economy includes a support system that teaches, nurtures, and sustains creative activities, such as arts programs in K-12 schools, post-secondary arts institutions to develop talent, and philanthropic foundations and other nonprofit organizations that provide financial resources, incentives, and services to the arts. Right, so these are the industries that we use to define the creative economy. So we have architecture and design, art galleries, communication arts, um, so on down the list. Now this list of creative industries can vary from place to place. Um, different states and areas have done creative economy reports. They're not always including the exact same set of industries. Um, I also want to emphasize that while the arts play a large and important role in the creative economy, with this report we're actually casting a much wider net by including design work of all times, as well as manufacturing um, and distribution activities. All right, so in 2015, as Bruce mentioned, California had over 747,000 wage and salary workers in the creative industries, largest number of any state by far. Um, however, the share of creative employment in California relative to total wage and salary jobs was slightly lower here um, than it was in New York, so we're looking at 5.3 versus 6.2%. Um, with this slide, we're showing the distribution of creative um, industry jobs in California. Uh, the largest employment counts were in entertainment, um, over 171,000, publishing and printing with 154,000, and I'll mention that includes internet publishing as well, and then fashion with nearly 120,000 jobs. So together, these three industries accounted for nearly 60% of the direct creative employment in California. And now this chart shows job growth in the creative industries from 2010 to 2015. These reports that we generate um, look at five-year periods. And again, this chart shows the dominance of the entertainment, publishing, and printing um, and fashion industries. And I think it's worth noting that um, publishing and printing, which includes both traditional print, media, that part of it has continued to decline, while we've seen internet publishing um, responsible for all of the growth in that particular sector. So between 10, 2010 and 2015, employment increased by 13.4% or at an annual average rate of 2.5%. In comparison, the increase in all wage and salary jobs was slightly larger at 155 over the 10-year period or, excuse me, five-year period or 2.9% um, annually. Total direct labor income um, earned by all workers in California's creative industries amounted to $84.4 billion in 2015. Uh, the largest shares went to publishing and printing. Again, most of that is internet related. And then entertainment and digital media. Direct labor income for all wage and salary jobs was $852 billion. So while the creative sector accounted for 5.3% of wage and salary employment, it generated almost 10% of total wage and salary payroll, uh, which tells us that many of these jobs in the creative industries are very well paying. <coughs> and now in addition to wage and salary jobs that we've discussed so far, there's a lot of self-employed individuals in the creative industries. Now the data set we use to capture self-employment runs a year behind um, the wage and salary data we use, so these numbers are from 2014, not 2015. Now these figures demonstrate how important self-employment is to the creative economy. In 2014, there were almost, almost 340,600 self-employed persons working in the creative industries in California, earning revenues of almost $14 billion. 
Now, self-employment in California is concentrated in the visual and performing arts. It's about 48% of the total, and the <laughs> communication arts. And in visual and performing arts, self-employment is actually more common than being on someone else's payroll. Now, up to this point, we've been talking about creative industry employment. So this covers all the employment in a creative industry, um, whether or not somebody's doing a creative job. So we're talking about everybody from the receptionist on up to the CEO and everybody in between. Another way to look at uh, the creative economy is to consider what people are actually doing. You know, that is creative occupations. People in creative occupations can be found throughout the economy, not just in our defined set of industries. Um, for example, you could have a graphic designer working for a media firm, but you might also see a graphic designer working for a law firm creating visual aids to help a jury understand a case. Now, in 2015, there were over 654,000 people in California working in a creative occupation. Art, design, entertainment, and media was the largest occupational group, followed by computer or mathematical, which would be software programming related to creative um, functions, and then education. Now, the numerous creative occupations uh, that they're found across so many industries, creative and non-creative alike, are evidence of the importance of creativity to the economy. It's a highly valued attribute essential to the excess of many kinds of firms and business activities. Uh, the further implication is that it is in the state's economic interest to maintain, nurture, and grow its deep pool of creative talent. All right. Because creativity is a highly valued and recognized professional attribute, many of these occupations pay very high wages. So this is a selection of creative occupations in California and their median annual salary. And these will include both full and part-time workers. Of the 77 creative occupations we analyzed in the statewide data, 57 of them had a median wage that was higher than the median across all industries in the state. Now this chart, excuse me, this chart demonstrates why we see relatively high wages in creative occupations. Almost half of them require a bachelor's degree or higher, while another 10% require at least an AA or some college. Additionally, more than half of the occupations that did not require a bachelor's degree paid a higher median annual wage than the statewide median. So even for less educated workers, the creative sector can provide a pathway to better paying jobs. Now with this chart, we're looking at something called location quotient. Um, an LQ is a way to measure uh, the concentration of an occupation. Um, in California or a metropolitan area relative to the rest of the United States. So an LQ of one means the concentration is about the same as the rest of the country. Less than one means a lower concentration. And more than one means that occupation is more highly concentrated in the geographical region. Now, high location quotients for a given occupation suggest that there's a competitive advantage uh, to working in that occupation. So we see in California that of the 10 highest location quotients, Eight of them are in creative occupations. And when you come down to Los Angeles County, all 10 of them are creative. All right, so, so far we've discussed the direct effects, and Bruce alluded to this. Um, direct effects in terms of jobs and labor income. Uh, that is in, uh, individuals who are employed in a creative industry, but the impact of the creative economy is actually much wider than that. So in this report, we also performed a contribution analysis to measure how creative activity ripples through the entire California economy. Now, the easiest way to think about contribution analysis is to imagine the ripples that spread out when a stone is dropped into a pond. Now, this stone represents the creative industries, the workers they employ, the income earned by those workers, the goods and services that they produce. Now, when you think of the ripples, you can think of the ripples as what happens when the creative firm purchases inputs to their production from suppliers. The act of making these purchases supports jobs um, in the creative firm supplier network. Okay, these make up the indirect jobs that Bruce referred to. Next, when direct and indirect employees are paid, they go out and spend their money on things like housing and clothing and entertainment and other kinds of consumer goods, and those actions create or support what we call induced jobs. So adding up all three of those effects is how we get to that 1.6 million um, workers in California either working directly in the creative economy or their job is supported by creative activity. So we'll take a closer look at what that means. All right, in terms of jobs, 
Direct jobs, as we've said, is 747,000. Direct and induced was another 189, or excuse me, 889, which brings us up to 1.6 million. Labor income, direct was over 84 billion. You add, add in the direct and induced, you come up to 136 billion. Output was $406.5 billion. Our contribution to California's $2.4 trillion, or $2.2 trillion this year, it's up to 2.4 now, uh, was $240.1 billion. And that generated state and local taxes that helped the government provide services to the citizens of California, $16.7 billion. So to conclude, the creative industries make a significant contribution to employment and economic growth in California. They also foster innovation and encourage spillover effects that create opportunities in other industries. The state's creative industries help move the economy forward by attracting investment, tourism, and consumer spending, and by generating significant tax revenues. Activities based on creativity and culture are essential components of a robust, healthy, and growing economy. Thank you.